these are divine. These are divine and so easy. You saw how easy it was. Super easy. That crunch though, oh, so good. What makes your garden grow? Water and sunshine. What makes your spirit grow? Knowing that should be mine. Well, hello friends. Welcome to Freedom Homestead. My name is Tangi and welcome to the Fall into Sourdough collaboration being hosted by my beautiful, wonderful, amazing friend, Anna, over at Fermented Homestead. Um, she had an idea to do a month long collaboration doing all things sourdough. There is an awesome giveaway as part of this collaboration. In the description box, I'm going to have links to all of the participants in the collaboration as well as the playlist. And you are going to want to watch every video, comment on every video, and every Monday night, Anna at Fermented Homestead, the one that's hosting this, she goes live on her channel and she will be randomly choosing a video from the week and then a commenter from that video to give a sourdough cookbook to, and the books are gorgeous. And then at the end of the month, actually the 1st of October, she'll be going live again. She'll be picking more winners from the comment sections of the videos, and we'll have other prizes um, that you will definitely want in on. So I wanted to get that out of the way before I started on this recipe. So today for you, I am making a sourdough discard recipe. And what a, what a discard is, is not something that has to be thrown away. It just has to be removed from the batch. Your instructions might tell you to stir your starter, discard one cup, then you know, and then feed. But what you do with that discard is totally up to you. You can throw it away if you want to. You can give it to your chickens, you can give it to your dogs, you can compost it, or you can make something really delicious with it, which is what we're gonna do. Uh, today I am making sourdough discard blueberry waffles. Yes, waffles. And this recipe is super easy. Um, you need some coconut oil or whatever oil that you like to cook with. Today I'm just using some uh, organic coconut oil that I found at a really good deal at Aldi. Um, I like to get the refined because it doesn't have the coconut flavor. And it also doesn't smell weird when it hits a hot pan. Come after me if you want to, but change my mind. Unrefined coconut oil smells weird when it hits the hot pan. It does. So I'm going to be using some of that. Also some uh, locally raised honey. This is from the Mammoth Cave region. Like I said, we are in Kentucky. Uh, my sourdough, which is just unbleached flour and water. Um, I'm going to be using some baking soda, some cinnamon, um, blueberries, of course, uh, for your for your awful iron, you're definitely gonna to want to have some sort of um, oil so it doesn't stick. Uh, you're gonna need an egg and some vanilla and salt. I forgot salt, I'll be right back. You can, I don't know if you can see it, but over here I do have my waffle iron heating up. Okay, so in our bowl, the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to crack our egg. And this is important. You want to put your egg in before anything else, okay? And then I'm gonna save this shell and give it to my chickens. I did light and then it left. Okay, so there's my egg. And now we need a cup of sourdough starter. Now, one of the things that I love about the videos that we've had so far is that a lot of the collaborators have shared uh, some troubleshooting uh, issues that they've had with their starter. And I can tell you what I had with mine. Now, I have been making sourdough for several years. I always find myself having to make more sourdough starter because I will neglect it for a long time and then it will die or it will mold. But I always, I've always made my own sourdough starter. I've never gotten some from anybody. And so uh, I did have a first when I made this sourdough starter, something that happened that's never happened before is my sourdough starter started to smell like Parmesan cheese. It was a very pungent, cheesy smell. And I had never even heard of that happening. And so I was like, oh no, what has happened? But after doing some research, I learned that that was actually normal. It just means that my sourdough needed to be fed more. And so, um, so I just did what I always do is I discarded. I did not eat the discard because of the smell, but I discarded and then fed it and then just kept at it. 
and this morning it smells fine. It, it doesn't have a, a pungent odor at all. So, okay, so I've got my one egg. I need one cup of sourdough starter, and you saw that I stirred it first. I will try to zoom in so you can see. Okay, perfect. All right, so now what I'm gonna do when we get done mixing this is I'm gonna feed my sourdough starter to replace what I just took out. This is a half cup measuring cup, by the way. Now to this, we're gonna add our vanilla. This is two, oh, this is one teaspoon of vanilla, half a teaspoon of cinnamon. I'm gonna give this a quick stir, and then we're going to add our honey and our coconut oil. You can use butter, you can use avocado oil, whatever it is that you have that you like to cook with. Um, but since I'm using coconut oil, I do need to melt this. And I went ahead and put my honey in there because the honey has um, turned to granules. So I'm just gonna melt this really quick. Melted that for a couple of seconds just to get it horrible. All right, we're gonna stir it again. This smells so good. We're gonna put in about a half a cup of blueberries. I actually got these blueberries at my Amish salvage store. Um, these were organic and they were $3.75 for the bag. It was a really good deal. Okay, we're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of salt. This is just pink Himalayan sea salt, but you use what you've got. And then last but not least, um, the half teaspoon of baking soda. We're gonna stir that really, really well. When it comes to um, when it comes to sourdough starter, um, I know a lot of folks weigh it uh, when they're feeding it, and then they do so many percent of hydration. I don't do that. I literally go by texture. When I first start my sourdough, um, I do measure. I don't weigh it. I just use measuring cups. But then once I get it going. Um, I take uh, the advice of Lisa Bass from Farmhouse on Boone. She said you just want it to be uh, a, a thick pancake batter consistency. So that's what I've always done and it has always worked well for me. All right, I'm gonna bring you over here and we're gonna start putting these on the waffle iron. I'm gonna go ahead and spray my waffle iron. Make sure nothing sticks and make sure I'm making a good mess because are you really cooking if you don't make a mess? I don't think so. Getting a good scoop. And I don't know if you can see it. Let me show you. This is what happens when you add your baking soda. You see all those bubbles, that chemical reaction. It's just amazing. It's just so neat. All right. So that was half a cup. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Make sure it's covered. Okay, I'm gonna close this and we're gonna cook it. Now mine isn't one of those that turn, but it does have a light on it that indicates when it's done, it senses it somehow. So this light will turn blue. That's when I check it and I have it all the way on max just because I like my waffles to be nice and crispy. So when this turns blue, we'll come back and see what it says or how it looks. Oh me, oh my, who is excited? Listen. Do you hear that crust? In my opinion, waffles must be crusty. I am so excited. Alright, let's get let's get another one on here. But you see the longer it sits, the fluffier it gets. I mean it's still gonna be kind of liquidy. Depending on your sourdough starter but i love it because you don't have to mix additional uh flour in it so it's gonna have like a a, a nice sour sour flavor um and depending on how sour your family likes it um you might i don't know you might want to add more 
honey. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh my goodness, you got this is so good. No, oh, come on. We didn't sign up for that. All right, have to get a close up before I dig into this. And I also need to take a thumbnail picture, but oh my goodness, you guys, it's crispy, it's light. And at this point in my um, sourdough starter stage, it's not very sour at all. The amount of honey is perfect. It's just perfect. I mean, it's light, crispy, it's perfect. This is so good. This doesn't even really need syrup actually. But, you know, we have it, so why not? All right, it's time for a taste test, but I already know these are amazing. All right, so I had to uh, take a couple of pictures for my thumbnail, but I could not wait to dig into this. It's crispy, it's light, it's like all the perfect amount of sweetness. Mmm. Mmm. This doesn't need anything else. Well, maybe a cup of coffee, but it doesn't need anything else. It is so good. First of all, if you want to make a bunch of these to um, freeze, then you're definitely gonna want to make sure that you feed your sourdough starter enough that you can make more than one batch. So this was one cup of sourdough starter and that was it. So if you want more, you'll just need to make sure that you feed your sourdough starter more. You can you you can feed your sourdough starter whole wheat flour, einkorn flour, um, and then turn out some really, really amazing waffles. Another thing, if you want to freeze these for later, which is what I plan on doing, well, not these, these are gonna get eaten, but I'm gonna make more after I have more sourdough starter, <laughs> and I'm gonna freeze a bunch of these. Um, if you wanna do that, you just wanna make sure that you put your waffles on a cookie sheet, let them cool completely, and then flash freeze them which means you put um, line a cookie sheet with some parchment paper, put your waffles on that after they've completely cooled, stick them in the freezer, let them completely freeze, and then you can throw them into a Ziploc bag. And then to serve them, you just throw them in a toaster oven or a toaster and um, cook them until they're crispy and hot all the way through. Uh, you can also change out the add-ins if you want to. Instead of doing blueberries, you could do a banana nut. Uh, waffle would be super good. Do savory. You could do bacon, cheese, sausage, ham. There's been many times where we did not, we could not afford maple syrup. Ways that you can make healthy um, toppings for your waffle. If you have enough fruit, throw them in a saucepan with a little bit of water, a little bit of sugar or honey. Cook it down and make a fruit syrup. Don't forget to check out the playlist below. Make sure you're watching every video, commenting on every video, and then you stay tuned to Anna's Live to see if she picks your name uh, for the giveaways. And try all of these sourdough recipes. You might mess up, you might have a fail, but keep going. It took a long time before I was able to master the sourdough starter. Um, I still haven't mastered the perfect artisan sourdough bread yet, but I have made sourdough bread plenty of times. Um, I love waffles, I love pancakes, rolls. Um, what else have I made? There's, I've made a sourdough starter flatbread and put some everything, um, everything bagel seasoning on it. That's really good. These are divine. These are divine and so easy. You saw how easy it was. Super easy. That crunch though. Oh, so good. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Definitely give this a try. Change up the flavors. Make enough to freeze so your family will have some healthy, yummy, delicious, good for their gut waffles for breakfast in the morning. It won't spike their blood sugar as much as regular waffles will. So good. That's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you try this recipe. I hope you win something. Until next time, remember to be vigilant, be prayerful, and be prepared. God bless you all, and we will catch you in the next one. Bye.